welcome to the workshop, Building a Tailored Resume. Um, I'm joined today by my colleague, Dr. Katie Homer. Um, Katie, for everyone out there that's watching via YouTube, would you mind doing your introduction um, one more time for us? Sure, yeah, thanks again, Joe. Hi, welcome y'all. I'm Dr. Katie Homer, the Director of Academic and Engineering Writing Support with the NC State Graduate School Professional Development Team. My role primarily involves working with graduate and postdoc trainees across the disciplines on a variety of writing projects. And we facilitate events like workshops and week-long writing retreats. Again, thanks, Joe, for having me. Um, nice to meet all of you in the greater Ada I community and look forward to speaking more with you about crafting strong resume bullet points. <laughs> thanks. All right. Thanks, Katie. Uh, so today, uh, in order to participate, if this is your first workshop or the first time that you're attending, um, job search strategies. Uh, the easiest way to participate is to place uh, your comments and questions in the chat function. We have team members that are monitoring both platforms uh, and we'll take questions uh, towards the end. But please make sure to use the um, chat functions uh, to help with participation and engagement. All right, so today, in terms of our agenda, we're going to look at CVs versus uh, resumes. Then we're going to talk about why it's important to tailor your resume um, and why it is important. Uh, and then we'll have some questions and answers. We have uh, three activities planned for you. We have a reading um, of a job advertisement activity, a visual design activity, uh, and then towards the end, we have some resources and we also have a sort of activity that um, we're not gonna have a chance to actually do today with you, but that you can take with you um, as you leave uh, and fully complete it. So our goals uh, for this session are for you to understand the value of a tailored resume, for you to develop strategies to help you read uh, job calls we like to think about the difference between goals and outcomes as goals being sort of larger um, things that you can take with you into the future versus outcomes that we have for today. And the outcomes are things that you're going to begin to do and implement. Um, and these are often things that are um, takeaways from the presentation. So uh, our outcomes are for you to begin to implement these revisions. And our last activity is going to ask you to complete a sort of revision plan for your resume based upon um, everything that you've learned today. All right, so CVs versus resumes. Um, CVs, so one of the key differences um, between CVs and resumes uh, is that a CV is a sort of one size fits all document. It's a comprehensive and detailed account of your research. That includes almost everything that you have done or that you are doing. Um, and it's appropriate for academic and research heavy positions. So I often get questions from uh, PhDs, master's students um, uh, that are thinking about transitioning into industry, whether it's appropriate to send a CV or if they should send a resume. And usually it depends on the audience and it depends on the position itself. So. If it's an R&D focused position um, and there's a lot of research that's involved, R&D is research and development. If it's a research heavy position, CVs may be appropriate. However, resumes are most 90% uh, of the time going to be more appropriate and fitting um, for applications for industry jobs. Resumes are different from CVs. They're a brief summary of your work experience they create a cohesive narrative of who you are as an applicant. And the audience may be um, both non-specialists and specialists. So while your CVs may be reviewed by um, folks from your discipline area or area of your discipline, uh, resumes are not necessarily um, viewed by specialists only. All right, so tailored resumes, what are they and why should you uh, create one? So the key here is that uh, it's kind of the difference between prose versus poetry. I come from a literary studies background. Um, so the difference prose versus poetry, uh, you have a limited amount of space when we're talking about a resume. 
Um, and so much like in poetry, when you have a limited amount of space, you really wanna take time to curate and select those parts of your experience that match with the position's responsibility. Uh, other sort of like why you would wanna create a tailored resume versus a resume that you can kind of send out a general one um, for all positions. It's the difference between a sort of tailored suit and a suit that's off the rack. And that's that the presentation of a tailored resume is a better representation of yourself. And it shows that you're engaged and that you really care about the position. Um, and keep in mind that this is your first form of communication that you're going to be sending someone. So this allows you to really put your best foot forward. All right, so reading a job ad. So the keys for reading a job ad um, when I talk with trainees are doing, making, and how those things are sort of put together in tools. Um, that allow you to do the doing and the making. And what I mean here is when we're reading a job ad, I want you to focus on the responsibilities uh, and think about what those responsibilities are. So by that, uh, there's a couple things, a couple ways that I like to go about highlighting key uh, terms and key words that we can use to help us create our tailored resume. So what will you be doing is a key. And what I mean by what you, will you be doing, I'm really thinking here about focusing on action verbs. And we wanna make sure again, that we mirror these in building a tailored resume. Katie's gonna talk with us a little bit about how to build strong action verbs here in a second. Um, so the other element of responsibilities is what will you be making? And by that, I mean, what will you be making with respect to your deliverables? That is, what are the key pieces of communication that you're gonna be responsible for? All jobs require us to communicate with others in the forms of presentations, reports. Um, and so it's important that you look for how, um, for cues in the job ad uh, and language in the job ad that may let us know um, what it is that you'll be responsible for creating in terms of deliverables. So what tools will you need to do and make? Um, and this is where we can really pull out the language that's focused on the skills and software that are necessary in order to complete the duties of the job. So how, what are the tools that you're going to do, uh, need to do and make these two actions or do these things? All right, so reading the ad, building and curating. The first thing that we wanna do as we're reading the job ad is for you to highlight key terms and that's the action verbs and the nouns. And then I would suggest that you sort those terms. So first we're gonna highlight and then I think it's important that you sort the terms in terms of categories. That is how can they fit, how do the action verbs and the nouns fit into categories such as communication, um, skills or instruments that are necessary, a uh, category of like leadership, a category that may be about like teamwork, um, things like being collaborative, um, being a good team member, these types of things would fit under uh, teamwork. All right, Kitty, would you like to explain um, the how to create a tailored resume? Um, yeah. Yeah, sure. So thanks again, Joe. So building off of Joe's conversation about how to read a job ad and to look for different overlapping categories or big themes in the job ad, you'll you'll be create. You'll, it's important to tailor a resume for each job opportunity, and you can also think of your resume as making an argument for your fit with a specific job or telling a story about who you are as a professional in relationship to your fit with a specific job. So some, so some ways to start thinking about resume organization are, do you want this to be a skills or project-based resume versus a chronological and experience or experience-based resume? The second thing, the chronological and experience-based resume is the most common type. This is where you list all relevant work experience, research experience, and teaching experience in a reverse chronological order. Again, this is the most frequent way of crafting the story of your employment and your, and your professional experience in relation to a specific job ad. A skills project resume can be helpful if you're making a leap across industries, working and in, moving from one industry to another, 
or if your skills and qualifications aren't apparent from your descriptions of past job experiences. A skills project resume is one where you can take the categories from the job ad that Joe mentioned and use that to structure the structure of the resume itself. For example, if you are looking, if say you're doing a position that involves science communication and technical skills, you might have a big heading in your resume for all of your technical experience in reverse chronological order and another heading that highlights science communication and leadership skills and relevant job positions in reverse chronological order that relate to that communications area. So organiz resume organization, there's some, these are the two kind of big formats for organizing and arranging your work experience in a resume. Moreover, when tailoring a resume, it's okay to echo the language of the job ad in order to interpret your past experience and qualifications. So building off of Joe's lesson on close reading job ads and using Voyant to identify keywords and understand the relationship among these keywords or duties, you can also paraphrase or echo that language when crafting the descriptions of your own relevant experiences, skills, and qualifications in the resume. This too shows that you've done your homework and shows how your past experience translates to this potential future opportunity. Lastly, all resumes should have a skills section. This would relate to softwares, scientific instrumentations, the, as Joe pointed out with the make and do categories. And you should, you should adapt the skills section to each new job, each resume for each job opportunity. This could include selecting those skills that are most relevant to the job call ad, but also rearranging the skills sections into categories that also resonate with the, the skill areas or categories of the job ad. So to give a concrete example, for instance, a material scientist might create separate subheadings for microscopy skills versus 3D modeling skills versus statistical analysis skills in relationship to a particular job ad. So the, the goal here too is to tailor that skills section to each specific job opportunity and use the results of your close reading and voyant search to set up those categories for the skills section. So as we see on the next slide, some tips for crafting strong resume bullet points. So the three big takeaways are make your bullet points results oriented, use active vivid verbs and be precise to help readers understand the context of your experience. So for the vivid verbs, it's a, this is a helpful handout from Boston, from Boston College that I used while teaching under, undergraduate engineering students at the University of Pittsburgh. You can take a look at these action verbs on your own terms, time. These two are divided up into skill categories like communication, versus teaching, versus technical skills, research, data analysis. You can also think of active action verbs that are commonly used in your academic discipline to describe the work that you do to do in order to keep the verbs more active and vivid. My rule of thumb here too is to avoid weak or generic verbs like participated in, helped, or served. These are not very specific. They also don't show as much leadership, and they're kind of boring. So use a variety of strong, vivid verbs that highlight your contributions to a project or your specific leadership roles within a job experience. So the results-oriented bullet points. This one is, this tip is a bit more, a bit more complicated. What this means is that you want to show not only what you accomplished, but the tools that you use to accomplish it accomplish it, and some evidence of what you've achieved in a particular project or job description. Google has a formula of, I accomplished X using Y as demonstrated by Z. Again, you're thinking of evidentiary support in the argument for your qualifications for the job. The easiest way is to look at our strong versus weak bullet points handouts that shows, so a weaker example would be studied nuclear materials. Whereas a stronger description of that research experience might break it down into specific steps, specific results, and instruments that the researcher used. Can I have a question? Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, or like with the teaching assistant example as well, like served is a very vague verb, but you could enumerate each of your relevant 
enumerate relevant duties for teaching. Last tip too for, for strong resume bullet points is to be precise. Use specific numbers to enumerate results, contributions. It also helps give readers the content, context for your experience. For example, seeing that you raise $200,000 is way more specific and stronger than saying that you improve sponsorship or increase sponsorship. So thinking about strong bullet points as strong bullet points as results oriented, action driven, quantified and precise. <laughs> All right, thanks Katie. Um, so one thing that I wanted to sort of talk about is that when we create resumes, um, in terms of the verbs and this uh, results oriented focus, um, we wanna really be precise and create context through, quanti um, through quantifying things. So if you have an award, make sure that you explain the award and that you explain it in a way that provides context for the reader. So if there were only four awards that were given, make sure that you say one of four awards. Um, you can also use dollar amounts to indicate the size um, and pr uh, prestige of the award as well. So Katie has an activity um, that we'd like to do with you. Uh, and so what we'd like you to do is to choose a section of your own resume and to rewrite a bullet point um, based upon the sort of strong action verbs um, that we talked about and the results oriented um, version as well as making it more precise. And then we'll use the chat function to share a revised bullet point uh, and we'll read a couple of those um, for, for everyone's benefit. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn my camera off again and I'll give you a few moments to pick a section of your own resume um, and rewrite a bullet point or two using a strong action verb, making it results oriented and making sure that you're precise. Moving on, visual design and why. So it's important uh, when we talk about designing a tailored made, made resume that we think about visual design. And that's because it grabs uh, the audience's attention. And it's the first time that you're allowed to demonstrate uh, your communication skills. And so we really wanna flex those communication skills, right? Um, also, it allows you to demonstrate your per personal style or personality. Perhaps you choose some favorite colors to incorporate into your resume uh, or a favorite font. Um, User-friendly design um, is also very important. And I like to think about visual design, um, creating a easily accessible document is very important and visual design allows you uh, to do so. So as Katie pointed out, um, and we've got some great questions uh, that have come in, but we'll answer later in the presentation. Um, you either begin with a sort of skills um, or project-based resume versus a chronological or a work experience, or then you have the option for the hybrid, um, which is sort of a sort of blend of both. One of the questions that came in that I just wanna answer um, now is why would you choose one over the other um, in terms, so, well, sorry, let me, go to my other monitor and read it is, would a skills or project be better than chronology or experience, especially if you don't have much experience? That's a great question. And the answer is kind of in the question. Um, if you don't have a lot of experience and you're relatively new, perhaps a fresh PhD uh, who doesn't have a whole lot of internships, you have a lot of projects that you've worked on in your lab and you have a lot of skills and you have a lot of experience that you've um, valuable experience uh, and training that you've received in those projects and in the lab itself. And so a skills or project-based resume allows you to emphasize that. A chronological-based resume or more um, often called work experience resumes, they allow you to demonstrate years of experience. And so often at times, this is a case of perhaps you've gotten your first position uh, you've occupied it for several years, and now you can create either a hybrid or you're moving into a position where the sort of requirement may be for years of experience. So you may want to switch your skills-based or project resume into a chronological 
or create this hybrid. So those are sort of uh, my, that's my way of approaching which one to pick. All right, so basic visual design principles. Um, we follow contrast, repetition, alignment, uh, and proximity. So contrast, um, the things that contrast can add to any presentation or to any visual design and a resume is after all a visual document is that it can make it visually interesting and it also creates a visual hierarchy. Contrast in color. Um, so we have several examples of contrast here. Um, several different examples of how to create contrast through color. Um, complementary, split complementary, um, also the uh, temperature of the color, whether it's a cool, neutral, or warm colors. Uh, so you can pick con contrasting um, temperatures of color. We also have contrasting values in terms of the shade uh, or in terms of the percentage of shade, so lighter to darker. You can also create contrast in shape. So things can be sharp, rounded, um, texture, hard or soft in the visual design. Contrast in size, um, the one on the right being more dynamic and perhaps more apt for this particular document. Contrast in size towards the bottom there with your name, your title or role and phone number, the way in which that contrast draws the eye in and creates an engaging document. Some more examples here that are pertinent to the um, document that we're thinking about right now, which is the resume, um, head, main headlines or main headings and subheadlines or subheadings um, can often be created through contrast. It's important that you create a hierarchy using typography. And I would say that you should stick, you should create that uh, hierarchy of typography at the onset of the document and make sure that you're following it and applying it correctly as you continue to build the resume. So repetition, um, repetition builds visual cohesiveness and highlights relationships. Ways in which you can create repetition are through format, um, which is important again for resumes, um, thinking about consistency. Uh, repetition pro can provide consistency uh, Color and font, um, again, creating uh, consistency through repetition. And then alignment. So it creates order and balance. It makes the page scannable. And in terms of a resume, this is a key design principle because alignment is uh, allows for ease of access um, and it can make the page very uh, user-friendly in terms of um, looking and finding the parts very quickly on the page. So some examples of alignment. Alignment with respect to justification here in the next few slides. Uh, quite often we're used to left alignment, um, but right alignment can be used to create um, visual uniqueness. And then we have edge alignment and center alignment. You can uh, use alignment in terms of contrast, um, putting things out of alignment. Proximity um, creates order, makes the page scannable and it uh, groups items. This is really important in terms of the resume because we wanna make sure that we have things that are uh, of like together. So text blocks, making sure that they're text blocks that are related um, in proximal relationship to one another. And these are all of the resources. Again, we're going to provide the presentation itself. Um, and these are all of the resources uh, that you can um, look at. Uh, during um, your spare time, um, but we have resources for the resume. Um, there's a variety of them. There's also the tutorial for Voyant tools, um, but I'd like to move now into our question and answer. Thank you very much, everyone. 
Um, I really appreciate you all uh, sticking with us. I know that the technology did not cooperate whatsoever today, um, but on behalf of Katie and myself, I wanna thank you all and we really appreciate all of your questions and your engagement with the presentation. And we'll make sure that all of this is accessible um, to everyone that was in attendance and that is going to watch this asynchronously. Katie? That was nice. Yeah, it was nice to meet y'all. Thanks for, all with the page, for your patience with the technology as we navigate Zoom together. We did get a question too about options for like follow-up questions about resumes and advising from the professional development team. Um, again, in the follow-up emails, we will include information on how to get in touch with our team members if you have specific questions or follow-up questions about your resumes. <laughs> Yeah, we, we can chat via Zoom or via email. Again, great to meet you. And thanks, Joe, for having us. Yes, thanks, everyone. And have a great uh, afternoon.